Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from IT Career Questions. In today's video, we are discussing the 10 most in-demand jobs for IT professionals. And for you who may be just getting started in IT or who is looking to get started in IT, this video can be very helpful for you because we're gonna be talking about these trends. And these trends have been going on for a few years now. So we're gonna jump into this because I think this is very important because there's one thing on here that I have never seen before. I put out a video like this just about every single year. And there are other companies out there who put out different articles or blog posts or even videos themselves just like this. So I go out there, research this information, see what people are saying. This article today is from CIO.com and I'm going to be sharing my screen, the 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2021, how to hire for them. You guys can find this article in the description below. We're just going to go ahead and scroll down here. And they worked with Robert Half to pull together some of this information here. This is what I want to uh, point out right here, which I think is really important. It says, while Robert Half Technology acknowledges a lot will impact a company's uh, starting salary, including competition, location, corporate culture, and budgets, there are certain things you can look for to make sure you land the talent you want. Now, I just wanted to point out here that they are really acknowledging the salary um, range here and, and saying that they're saying the starting salaries are going to be different based on competition, based on location, corporate culture, budgets. Note that it really depends on your location. That is going to be the number one factor. It really highly, heavily, majorly, hugely, I'm very much so emphasizing this because it really makes a huge difference depending on where you live. Somebody who lives in Los Angeles is going to make something completely different than somebody who lives in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska, even though they have the same job title. So yes, a system engineer in Los Angeles will make something completely different than a system engineer in Nebraska. And we are even talking like a thirty to $40,000 a year difference. It could be that drastic, literally. So please keep that in mind. Now, we can go into culture, we can go into budgets, we can go into many different factors that can go into play. But the fact of the matter is, every single location, every single business is going to pay differently. There's a lot of great tools out there that can help you find salary ranges in your area. Glassdoor.com is one of them. CompTIA has a salary calculator tool that can help you at least figure out a salary range in your area. But Glassdoor.com is at least going to give you uh, the most accurate uh, representation of a salary for specific locations if they are available. So definitely check that out. So let's jump into the 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2021. We'll briefly touch on some of these because there's really one at the bottom that I think is the most important. Uh, some of these we're just going to rehash essentially because these have been ongoing. So for the past few years that I've done this video, these are just repeats. They're really just ongoing. We still need these jobs. They are still in demand over and over and over again. So jumping right into the first one here, we see security professional. And I love that they just left that very kind of open and, and bland, if you will. They didn't leave it a uh, specific job title within cybersecurity. They just leave it security professional. And it says information systems, network, data, cloud, meaning it's very wide open. And that's very true because in the world of cybersecurity, there are hundreds, if not thousands, and they say millions of open cybersecurity jobs. So yes, that is definitely an in-demand job. And for the past few years, that has been one of the most in-demand jobs in the IT field. And we're going to see that even still going forward for years. So if you're looking to get into IT and you're trying to figure out, like, where do I specialize in? What should I do? Security is definitely one of those areas you should focus in for sure. And if you don't want to focus in it, at least have some fundamental knowledge of security because it's going to be very, very helpful for you. The next one we want to talk about is cloud architect. Now cloud, and now let's talk about cloud first. Now cloud is definitely an area that's just booming and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. It's already doing that. And I, somebody said recently in the next like three years, it's going to grow by five, 10, 15%, I believe a few percentages. It's going to be growing. Uh, architect is more of a higher level, but if you're looking to get into IT or you're starting out, getting some fundamentals in cloud is going to be helpful so you can start at least growing your skill set in that field and start making your way up. Moving on to the next one on the list, database administrators. Yeah, if you want to jump in some uh, SQL database, MySQL or SQL is 
a lot of people like to call them. Yeah, there, there's tons of different databases out there or you know, database structures out there, if you will. And we need people who can manage those. So if that's something that, you know, that piques your interests, um, definitely look into that. And along with database administration, it's gonna start falling in the lines of automation because with administrating uh, databases, you will find that you will have a lot of opportunity to start automating some of your processes there. So if that's something that like piques your interest, definitely start uh, taking a look down that route. Uh, programmer analyst. Now, programming, any type of programming, like we will always need people who can do programming. That will never be me. I will never be a programmer because I don't like it. But if that's you, we will always need people, people who can do any type of programming, any type of development. So definitely take a look at that. And next on our list is systems analyst. And if you want to be a systems analyst, typically you're going to lo be looking at a couple years of working in the field to really understand how the di different systems and applications work in environments. And of course, with systems analysts, you're typically specializing in a few different systems or applications to really become kind of a quote unquote expert in specific things. So for instance, when I was working in healthcare, we had different systems analysts who were in charge of our healthcare systems. So systems analysts were only in charge of EMR systems and they only worked with our uh, nurses and doctors in regards to our healthcare system. So anytime a doctor or nurse called and they had an issue with our uh, electronic medical record systems, we would transfer them to our systems analysts and our systems analysts would have uh, would handle that. Now our systems analysts were part of our IT team. We all worked together. We were all very kind of cross-functional in many ways, but systems analysts always managed uh, our EML, our EMR applications. So that's just kind of like, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, give you an example of maybe what a systems analyst would do and maybe if that's something that interests you, you could fall down that line and you could start gearing up to do something along those lines. Moving on to mobile applications developer. Now, this is very similar to being just a programmer or developer, of course, but you're going to be more focused on building mobile applications. And it is going to be much different than building software applications for uh, operating systems, right? You're going to be mainly focused on mobile, which those operating systems do function much differently. And as as you know, everybody carries a cell phone around and the need for mobile application developers is going to be much higher moving forward because as we know, we have this huge shift of you know mobile, everything on the go, and everybody wants to have an app for everything. So we know that the need for developers, especially in the mobile arena, is growing and it's, it just keeps growing day by day. So if you are interested in programming, and you're interested in making a lot of money, becoming a mobile app developer, probably that could be a good route for you for sure. And then moving on to network administrator, we're always going to need people to administer our networks, right? We're always going to need people configuring our switches, managing our routers, our firewalls, etc. right? Like that, those are never going to go away. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, definitely take a look at that. You guys can see all the salary ranges here, of course. I'm not going over that because it's clearly on the screen for you there. But yeah, network administrators will always need you guys. So if again, if that sounds interesting to you, check us out at NextGenT because we actually take you through a zero to engineer program and we actually get you hands-on experience where you actually use real switches. We actually send you out a real switch and a router so you get hands-on experience with that equipment. Nobody else does that. Check out the link in the description below. You'll see what I'm talking about. Next one on the list, software developer. They have all types of developers. Why wouldn't they just like compile those all into the same thing? Because like to me, I just read that in like all ones and zeros, like software developer, mobile applications developer, programmer. Like to me, like that's all the same thing. Like you're developing something, you're programming something, like same thing, ones and zeros. You're just a programmer, go away. Again, we could we could just spin ourselves in circles here, but it's the same thing. If you want to develop stuff, you want to be a programmer, those are great jobs, but you're literally stuck in front of a computer most of the day coding stuff constantly. Some people enjoy that. I applaud you. I don't. Moving on to DevOps engineer. Now, this is something that kind of like this is DevOps is that mixture between development and operations. And if that's something that interests you, definitely start looking into that. Now, this is something that actually interests me because my background actually does fall in the lines of more, you know, programming and development because I started doing web development long ago, you know, PHP, HTML, CSS, all of that fun stuff. That's my that's where my background started. And then I got into the operation side. So DevOps is something that actually kind of interests me. Um, and if that's something that interests you, 
we need people who have that kind of mindset, who can focus around, you know, development and operations and understand at, a, at an overall level what it takes to actually uh, work within a business organization and understand what it takes from a development side and what it takes from an operation side to make a business work, you know, together. So this is just me broadly, basically putting things together because I don't want to spend too much, like too much time on all of this stuff because this last one here is really, really important. But if DevOps engineer sounds like something important to you, definitely look into that. This last one here, help desk and desktop support professionals. Huge, huge. This is the first time on this list in the last like six or seven years that I've been putting this list together. This is the first time that I've seen help desk and desktop support professionals on this list. This is huge. This is huge for us. So in-demand jobs for 2021, the 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2021, help desk and desktop support professionals. That means we need more people who can help at the front lines. We need more people who can help answer phones, help do tickets, help do level one desktop support, right? Technicians everything, analysts, just everything across the board. We need you. We need everybody. And this is huge. Like if you want to get into IT, these are the roles right here that open up the door. These are the roles right here that open up the door to your entire future. And you don't have to work in these roles for years upon years upon years. Like these are the roles that you can start working in for six months, a year, two years, no more than four years. Please, for the love of everything, don't work in a help desk role for more than four years because that would be the worst thing ever. But yes, you can work in these roles for six months, one year, two years, and then you can just excel your career. This is simply a stepping stone. Because the most important thing in the world of information technology to really excel your career is experience. And to get experience, help desk, that gives you the most experience. And I am just, I can't believe this is on here. It makes me so excited because this, this will propel your career faster than anything. I've seen so many people complaining and crying because they've gone through college and they've gone and gotten, you know, all these different certifications and they're applying for all of these jobs that they're just not qualified for. And they're so upset that they've quote unquote wasted all of this time and all of this money applying for jobs that they're not getting when they could just apply for a help desk job or, you know, some type of entry level job and just start working and then, you know, just advance their career. I've talked about this so many times, y'all. If you want to work in IT, just start off and working in entry level, work there for a few months and just boom, you get experience and you go on. That's the way it goes. That's literally the way that it goes. Some of you will have to work in help desk longer than others and that's okay. We all, we all take the time that we need to learn the things that we need and move on. We will be okay but you guys can do this. This excites me. So thank you to CIO for putting this article together. You guys can check out the link to this article in the description below. And if you guys are ready to take your career to the next level, I highly suggest you check out the sponsor of this video, NextGenT. Follow me over there. Links in the description for them as well. Like I said, in this video, we actually send you out real equipment, like a real router and a real switch. So you can actually configure these like hands-on, like you put your hands on them, right? That's huge. No other program out there does that. So when you're ready to actually get real hands-on experience and become a real IT professional, go through our Zero to Engineer program. In six months, we can turn you into an IT professional through real hands-on training. Are you ready to level up your career? Check out the link in the description below and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching IT Career Questions. And as always, take it easy.